And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Luke 1, 28. We are a people called by God to positively impact and influence our generation. We are a living spring to a thirsty world, a place where imperfect people find true joy, genuine friendship, and practical truth for living from the Bible. We have entered a year of divine favor. This is a place where you are being singled out by God for special treatment at His exclusive and unquestionable bidding and pleasure. It means you have somehow found favor with God against all odds. You are stepping into a place where natural laws and normal course of events are altered, canceled, or suspended just for you. You will either be pulled out of the line or your line will become unique and different from others. You will stand out and be outstanding. God's supernatural favor flowing into your life is not based on your background, color, looks, or personality. God's favor is based on His Word and believing what it says about you. Favor will break through any barrier set before you. You will have favor with God and with men. Favor will help you achieve your goals and fulfill your divine destiny in Christ. God will raise men to invest their time, resources, and credibility over your destiny. By the favor of God, you will produce enviable results. There will be favor for properties, favor for promotion. Wherever you suffered harm and disadvantage, God will turn it into your advantage. You will receive favor for new heights and new levels. The wind of divine favor is released in your direction. God will cause your enemies to show you favor. People will pursue you to bless you. 2022 our year of divine favor. Get ready for the Word of God as we welcome our senior pastor, Reverend Kingsley Ayesu. Hello family, this is Kingsley here. First of all, I would like to say a big thank you for your support and for being a part of what God is doing through our ministry. You are so appreciated and I hope these messages are adding value to your life in a tremendous way. People sometimes ask, well, why should I come to Christ Covenant Chapel? Christ Covenant Chapel is a great church where God is developing people to positively impact our generation. We are a family-oriented church where everybody is somebody. We want to produce content, the life-giving content to help as many people as possible to change their lives. That is what our ministry is all about. Thank you for supporting us on Instagram, Facebook, and right here on YouTube. You are getting ready to listen to a life-transforming message. Thank you for your prayers and support. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha. Now, when you see the sons of the prophet, he's not talking about biological sons. Yeah. There, is, um, there was um, a school of prophets where prophets were trained by a seasoned prophet to become prophets, all right? And so they were sons and daughters to the prophet. I've heard people talk about um, the fact that, you know, where is all this coming? And people have actually gone online to debunk and to, you know, argue against it without any biblical basis whatsoever. That spiritual fatherhood and spiritual motherhood is, an, is something that people are using to, you know, manipulate your know, people's minds and all kinds of nonsense. You know, when, when, see, some people, eh, the best thing for them is not to speak. The moment they open their mouth, they expose their ignorance. You know, because, you know, it's not even an Old Testament phenomenon. You know, Paul says, I am a father to, he said, you may have many instructors, but you have only one father. He said, in Christ, I have begotten you. He says, Timothy, my son. You know, and he says to Philemon, he says, you know that if it wasn't because of me, he said, I want you to put this to my charge, son. And so, I don't know. I, 
He says, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Now I want to pay attention to this. He feared the Lord. That means he was a holy man. He was a righteous man. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Why? So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And he said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass. Now it came to pass. Whatever you are going through, it came to pass. This is one of my favorite verses, uh, phrases in the Bible. It came to pass. It didn't come to stay. It came. It came. So it will come. But it will pass. Oh, come on somebody. So, so listen. I, I tell you that the, the people that take their lives, Pastor Enoch, it is not because their problems are bigger than ours. It is because they lose hope. And when you lose hope, you become hopeless. Some of us, are, we have much more problems. You kill one and seven more come for their funeral. The problem we keep smiling and keep dancing and keep shouting at is because that in spite of all of it, we have hope. We have hope that tomorrow will be better than yesterday. We have hope that because Jesus is on the throne, things are going to get better. Are you understanding me? So you can never lose hope. No matter what you're going through, you can never lose hope. Amen. For as long as you live on this terra firma, you have no idea what God can do. Hear me somebody. This is not my message, but maybe somebody needs to hear this. Maybe you walked in here with a lot of burden upon your heart. We have a God who is a burden bearer. Ah, come on somebody. We have a God who is a burden bearer. He is the one who makes way where there seems to be no way. Well, let me tell you, the Bible didn't say there is no way because wherever God is, he can make a way. He says that there only seems to human beings that there is no way, but God is a way maker. Are you, are you here with me? You know, we sing the song, way maker, miracle worker, promise keep. Do you really believe God is a way maker? Because if you believe God is a way maker, then it doesn't matter what they said negative to you, you will still believe and trust. I don't know about you, but I have a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Are you here with me, somebody? My, 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 my. He said, now it came to pass, it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. You see, it is your capacity that determines your content. God cannot give you more if you don't have more to pour in. For as long as you have empty vessels, God will keep pouring. That is why you must come to God always empty, ready to receive. Are you hearing me, somebody? I know somebody said, when is he starting to preach? I have started a long time ago. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, "Go." you see, I, 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 I don't have time to exegese this completely. There are people that somebody has lied to you. So even when they are getting into business or anything, they hide it from their man of God. You see, pastor, there are Muslims that will never stand a business without talking to their uh, imam. Buddhists will never start a business without talking to their guru. It's only Christians who hide because you know why? They know that if the business do and they hear, pastor will ask for tithe. So don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> but she went in, the miracle happened, and she came back and said, this is what has happened, man of God. Where do we go from here? God 
go and he said go sell the oil and pay your debt and you and your sons live on the rest hey. Lord help somebody with understanding this morning in the name of Jesus Christ amen please be seated we've been talking about manifesting his glory money matters or money matters depending on where you come from manifesting his glory manifesting simply means showing off all right showing off and um, I gave you um, it's been two weeks uh, I know two weeks is a long time I hope you haven't forgotten about what we're talking about then. but uh, we talked about glory and we said uh, it is used to describe the nature and the acts of God in self-manifestation alright that is what he essentially is and does so when we're talking about the glory of God we are talking about who God is and what God does are you hearing me because there is being a lot of you know misrepresentation and misunderstanding of what the glory of God is when we're talking about the glory of God you see so what we are saying is that the glory of God is the manifested perfection of God's character so when we're talking about we see the glory of God it means that we see the character of God on display are you are you still with me we see the character of God where on display and one of the characters of God is that he's a good God God is good you believe that God is good I know you are looking at your life and it doesn't seem like God but God is good God is good hallelujah God is good God is good so when we say that we are experiencing the glory of God one of the statements that one of the things that that statement means is that we are experiencing the true nature of God the goodness of God the love of God the blessings of God in our lives it's the glory see some of us have limited the glory of God to mean that we, we, we enter into an atmosphere and that's that's not entirely wrong it's just not it's incomplete all right when you know we have you know like a revival and oh by the way we are going to have our spring revival starting Friday amen hey only one person said amen are you tired already we have Apostle William Shalders coming from New York to be with us we are going to be here in person on Friday evening at 6 30 to 8 30 and then Saturday we have our leadership leaders development uh, 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 seminar going to start from 10 a.m. and so every worker every leader every minister every pastor is supposed to be here at 10 in the morning if you do any work in the church those of you who couldn't make it this morning whatever you do if you are a worker in the church we need you to be in here uh, we're going to have uh, um, um, breakout sessions where we are going to you know break out into your specific ministries so ministry of helps will break out uh, music and sound will break out and then you know pastors and their wives and presidents of organizations and their wives will break out into one session and uh, uh, um, how many of you know that the most important decision you will make is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior after that the most important decision second to that one is who you marry if you marry wrong you are dead it doesn't matter your anointing you are going nowhere to happen and it's not only for church sometimes when you talk about the people think oh, it's only talking about senior pastors listen you you try starting a business okay let me talk to the men you st try starting a business and your wife starts giving you problem you you know when you start something like a business you put all your energy into the thing and if you don't have a wife who is on the same page with you when you are at work doing overtime you get a call where are you the children and I need you are you the only one who started the business 
So if you don't have somebody who has that kind of understanding that this is the kind of man I married and I have to understand that this is a season in our life and things will get better but I have to give him time to figure this thing out, you are dead. You'll be running in circles doing the same business. Nothing is going to happen. So it's not just for ministry. All right? So we are bringing the pastors, the presidents, CEOs, and their wives together and have a nice conversation. Amen. And sometimes not just the husband, sometimes the wives also start things. If your husband is trouble, me, I can't marry a woman who doesn't know how to take care of the house. Why are you not here? Why? The children. Am I to feed the children? Why? Is she the only one who gave birth to them? Why? You, you can't feed children. Amen. Thank you for that one. Amen. And sometimes it's simple like a man sacrificing to work double shifts where a woman can go to school and get better herself and come and help the family out. But no, 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 no. So it matters who you marry. It matters. Pa. When an African say pa. Are you okay? Yes. It matters. No, no, for real. For real. I'm telling you, it matters who you marry. And so, listen, don't marry because he has six packs. And listen, it's only a matter of time. It will become one pack. I'm telling you, all, all the six will come together as one. Beautifully. <laughs> it's what? Zero pack. I know she's a size eight. She has a flat belly. It says, it, the hips are what this size and that. The, listen, two children, just two. Just two children. She will move from size eight to 14 so quickly. You, before you blink, things are falling apart. I had a couple come to my office and they, the man is so upset. Why? The woman is gaining weight and she can't control it. And, and everything, every, now she, she's moving from this, this, this. And pastor, this is not what I married. And I looked at her I said, can I see a picture of when you were young? He said, I don't have a picture. When I, I said, did you have her? And I mean, she, he's pretty bald. He said, yeah, I had her. I said, and I said, why don't you do something about your bald head? <laughs> Fix it. She also didn't marry a bald-headed man. She married a man with hair. Listen, we are all changing. We are all changing. Accept the reality. You see, the problem is when we marry for the wrong reasons, then we begin to have problems because the reason why you got into it was wrong. So the premise upon what you said I do is wrong. Peter writes to the church and he says that let not your adorning and your beauty be the dresses you are wearing and the things you put on your hand and, and the necklace you put around. Let it be a, a godly character. How did I get here? So we are bringing people together to help you. To help you. Amen. Amen. You see, some of the people that, I'm not jealous of them, I'm just happy for them is uh, young people who are yet to marry. Yeah, because we have to help you to make it right. To make, it, to make the right decision. Amen. You get what I'm saying? So, all right. I want to show you something. I have said over and over, and I don't want you to think that, um, you know, sometimes when you, you teach on money matters and you're talking about prosperity and things, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Some people have taught it wrong. You see, we have taught materialism and called it kingdom prosperity. But there's a difference. You know, somebody can be materialistic and be broke. 
doesn't have a dime and still be very, very materialistic. It's a matter of your heart. It's a matter of your heart. All right? So when we talk about kingdom prosperity, we're talking about money matters. I want you to understand that your, your financial situation matters to God. Why? Because if we are going to show forth the character of God, then your life must show to humanity the goodness of God. Am I making sense? A little, just a little bit. Right? Yeah. So, so, don't come here and tell me that God is a healer. But we meet and somebody is sick and nothing happens. Nobody gets healed. Right? I like the quiet. But God says, I wish above all things. Above how many things? Oh. Above how many things? Oh. That you prosper even as your soul prospers. Right? Give me Jeremiah 31 and verse number 14, I believe. Jeremiah 31 and verse number 14. And then after that, Joel chapter 2 verse 26. I want you to pay attention. He says that I will satiate the soul of the priest with what? Oh, hold on, hold on. With what? The priest, that is the pastors. I like that. Because that is right in my territory. You know, because it's very true because there are people who think that the pastor must be poor. Why is the pastor driving a good car? Because we, we want to associate holiness to poverty. So the more poorer the man of God is, ah, he's holy. I have seen poor people that have been one iota of holiness. But God says that I will satiate the soul of the priest with abundance. And listen carefully, this is where it matters to you. And my people shall be what? Come on, talk to me. My people shall be what? Wait. God says that my goodness will satisfy you. Means that when you see the goodness of God, you will be full. Huh? So you, you can't talk to me about, I, I, I am experiencing the goodness of God and, 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 and your pantry is empty. It is not Bible. He says that, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Give me Joel. Let me show. I'll, I'll connect the two together and then we'll, maybe we should even, he said, you shall eat in plenty and be what? Did you see that in your Bible? You will not eat in poverty. Listen, it is an error. The wise man says that there's an error I have seen on the earth. He says, servants and slaves are riding on horseback and the princes are walking on, the, on barefoot. He said, there's something wrong. Listen, in case you don't know, as a Christian, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. We are a chosen generation. We are royals. He said, you shall eat in plenty. So you don't pay your bill this month and worry about how next month is going to be paid. Because you paid this month in plenty. Pastor David, we must bring the church to a place. Listen to me. I told you last two weeks. Bible says a poor wise man with his wisdom, he delivered a city from a strong king. But because he was poor, nobody remembered the same poor man. When they were concluding the story, they even took the wise man out. Because of poverty, the generation re remembered him not. May that never be your story. Amen. That because of poverty, your family will not remember you. There are certain people, Pastor Prince, people, decisions are made in the family before they hear about it. Listen, they will call you before decisions are made. Ah, yeah, ah, 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 because you have a say. You have a say. You have a say. Listen, let me tell you something. Whether you like it or not, it is, it is the money that controls. You can be anointed. Listen, if you, 
if you are anointed and broke, you are a nuisance. You say, where are you getting that from? That is the problem of the prophet. Very anointed. Bible says he was holy, but broke. What kind of combination is that? Holy and broke. So you see, the problem with the church today is that the man is broke, right? And then he makes a very huge mistake. And he marries. That is a wrong combination. If you are going to be broke, be broke alone. Don't bring somebody else's into that environment and let some poor woman suffer. All in the name of what love. I will tell you something in a little bit. And now we don't even stop there. Oh. Now we get, <laughs> we move from that level and we start making babies. And so we marry into poverty. We bring children into poverty. And we perpetuate the poverty clan. And you know what? Especially those from Africa, we call it generational curse. No, it's a generational mistake. No, no. And this prophet, holy, anointed, perfect prophet, you, you are poor. You are going to marry. You also marry somebody who is poor. Wrong combination. I know you don't want to hear it like that, but. So there are a lot of Christians. Everything is going right in our lives except our finances. And so now you invite people even to come to church. Right? And once you're inviting them to church, you say, do you have a jumper in your car? My, my battery is dead. Can you jump the car for me? But you just told me how good God is. That if I come to God, all my issues will be solved. And, and you need jumper. He said, you know what? I will pass by this one. We did not come to you with the eloquence of men. We did not come to you with the intelligence of men. We came to you in the demonstration of the power of God Almighty. And so we are talking about a place where we get to, where people see the power of God, the goodness of God, the greatness of God, that when we say God is good, without any shadow of a doubt, they'll believe it, that God is good. Amen. I am not teaching materialism. I'm talking about just being a Christian, serving a God who is good. Hello, somebody. He said, I will satisfy you with my goodness. With my goodness. Hmm? You see, so now, somebody said, they do it in the name of love. You see, men, let me help you out, okay? When a woman says, I love you the way you are, Don't be deceived into thinking it means I love you to remain the same forever. That is not what she meant. When she says, I love you the way you are. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Moses, they have an unconscious timetable in their head. That within three to five years, your story will change. So after three, four, five, your story hasn't changed. Her story about you will change. And the woman said, Amen. So you keep telling her, It is well. It is well. It is well. All of a sudden, you see the woman with a, you know, squeezed face. 
No honey, it's everything. I don't honey me. Don't honey me. Don't honey me. What is honey about this? Because suddenly you will realize that, listen, there is no romance without finance. Because, hey, 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 the truth of that matter is that you need funds. You need money to fund the fun. Speaking. Hey, 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 hey. Yay! Hey, hey, hey! We need money to fund the thing. You think that I will give you free ticket to go to Bahamas? They want to see the color of your currency. So don't don't go further and start making children and you know. And then we get to a point, we start quoting scripture and say, but God, you said you will bless me, you will give me money. There's no way in scripture God said he will give you money. God doesn't have money. How is he going to give you money? How can God give you what he doesn't have? This, I am not teaching fallacy or, 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 or apostasy or anything. It is true. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. We, we quote the card. God says that he will make me rich and he will prosper me and, and, and he will give you, God didn't say he will give you money. How? So listen to me, if you belong to this church, don't let any prophet fool you and tell you, oh, give 1,000 and when you go into your bank account, there will be money in your account that God put in supernaturally. Listen, well, so I go, we'll find out where it came from. Hello? Do I believe in miracles? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm standing here because of the miracles of God. All right? But the practicality of the gospel has been put aside and we have replaced it with all kinds of foolishness. Muslims go to church, they take off their shoes. Christians come to church and take off your braids. Listen, think. If that pastor has the ability to move money from places into the account, pastor, let us keep our tithe and offering. Just keep calling into the church account and take care of God's work. Add one plus one. It's always two. Listen, God never said he would give us money. This is what he told me. And you shall remember the Lord your God. You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you what? He gives you what? Power. To do what? Yes. Uh, God gives power. That word power there, in the Hebrew, that word power there means he gives you ideas and abilities to get wealth. I think I like the original King James. It says to make wealth. So God gives us what? Power. To do what? To get wealth. Hello. Are you okay? Am I doing okay? So far. Okay. God gives us the power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers. And it's this thing. God says, listen, I've made certain covenants. And for those covenants to become a reality, I have to give you ability to make wealth. So that when you stand, you can say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Listen to me. He is not a different God. He is just a different dimension that the humanity saw about this God. So God gives us the power. The problem with the church is that we have been made to believe that God is going to send money somewhere, somehow. And so we have, even when we get the idea, we don't take action with that idea. And we die with it. And so we sit and we say, God will do it. God will do it. God will do it. And you don't worry, God will do it. When? When? When is God going to do it? And then we, we add scripture. No, God's time is the best. 20 years. We are still waiting for God's time. Hmm? 
God's ear cannot hear anymore. Me, this is what I have concluded. God's time is now. Now, now, now. Now, didn't see say in Isaiah 118, say, come now. Uh, God's time is now. So, God gives us the power to get wealth. God doesn't give us wealth. Am I right? He gives us the power. So, so we have the power, but we are not using power to create the wealth. Are you understanding me? And so, uh, uh, you, 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 are, you are powerful, but you are poor. So, we are powerfully poor. Why? Because we lack understanding. You see, what our understanding of power is, you know, people falling under the anointing and, uh, and uh, we, we claim they receive the power of God. We say, no, no, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I believe in that. God ministers to people falling under the anointing. You come out and all kinds of things have transformed in your life. I do believe in that. But don't let us limit the power of God to just that. So we, we, we teach all these things, but we never connect to the anointing of money. I told you three weeks ago, money is a spirit. There's a spiritual side to money. But you see, why am I teaching this? Because you have to become rich without money. Why? Because you must become it before you can attract it. What, what do I mean by you, you must become it before you can attract it. All right. So that, for example, when Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ, right, he said, How, what, what must I do to be, right, what must I do to be? So you must be it before you can attract it. So if your mindset is poverty, you can never attract wealth. So it has to start from here. That God did not bring you this far to suffer all the days of your life just so you can make it into heaven and walk on streets of gold. The other day I told you, I know people will criticize, analyze, ostracize me, and that is fine. I don't want to walk on no streets of gold after I suffer here. You don't have to say amen to it. Can I enjoy a little bit of that gold here? And then come and walk on it in heaven. But it starts with your mindset. It must be transformed. It must be renewed. It must, some of you have to be uneducated to be educated. To know that it, there is nothing wrong with being a Christian and having money. It doesn't make you ungodly. It actually means that God loves you. Bah! Because, listen, if you do not become it here, before you get it, you will lose it. Let me give you an example, Minister Alote. If I give you $10 billion, right, and your mindset is capable of handling $10,000, you will make wrong decisions, wrong investments, until the $10 million reduces to $10,000. Then you will settle down, and you will normal again. Why? Because you don't have the capacity. So, so Elisha could have given the woman money. But remember what she said. If I give you the money, you, you will pay the debt, but you will be broke again. So I'm going to give you an idea, a system, so that after you have paid the debt, you can live off this for the rest of your life. How? Selling and buying and selling and producing and buying. I'm not making it up. This is Bible. He said, go and live off this. Sell it, sell it, sell it.
sell it. Buy more. Sell it. Sell. Listen. God rained manna for Israel for as long as they were in the wilderness and couldn't plant to see it germinate and grow because they were nomads. They were moving. Then when they settled in the promised land, the manna continued coming, but they planted. They watered. Bible says, I'm not waking up. The first day they harvested their crop, the manna ceased. God will never perform a miracle in something that you can do naturally. The manna ceased from that day. So those who were lazy and didn't sow, from that day, they were poor in society. Are you... Are you so... He said, go and do what? Sell. Uh, sell. Woman, I want to teach you how to make money. Amen. This first consignment is free. But from henceforth, You know, some people come to me, Pastor, when I became born again, man, things were happening for any time I pray, answer, any time, but these days it takes a while. Hey, the honeymoon season with God is over. Now God wants to build character. Do you have the acumen to live life? So, so let me give you my point there. This prophet, by the way, Bible tells us that he was a real prophet. He was holy. He was, he was good. And I'm sure he had a good relationship with his spiritual father. Hmm? But he was poor. Listen. You can be a bishop and be broke. And a deacon in the church will be prosperous. Hello. So the, the prophet made a mistake and married when he was poor. Married a poor girl. You see, when poverty marries poverty, it leads to calamity. Please come back next week. Oh. <laughs> so, so, Pastor, now they started perpetuating a generation of, of producing poor children in poverty. He didn't even do one, two. And then the man dies and leaves the woman with the dead. Listen, no man in this church should die that foolish death. No way. No. No. You, you, you will become an embarrassment to the kingdom of God. Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance not only to his children, but his children. Listen, your grandchildren should come and kiss, kiss grandpa's picture because you left something for them to live off. Papas, we live our lives anyhow. And then, and then we, we, some people even go like, do you know how we suffered to, to make it in life? You too have to suffer. Listen, I am suffering so they won't have to suffer. Yeah. What kind of life is this? Everybody pays student loans. You to get some. Man. And you wonder why the Caucasians are doing better. Because they plan so their children do not have to suffer like that. We use all kinds of money to build houses in places we don't even have the legal documents to go to. And your children are suffering here. What kind of life is this? Are you okay? Eh? Let's tell the truth. Listen, this is what the church has done very well in teaching people about the 10%. But we, we, we did not teach them what to do with the other 90%. Listen, if you are suffering, your parents suffered, and you didn't learn any lessons, and you allow your children to go through the same thing, you have failed. Failed. Miserably. That, the story must change somewhere. At some point, 
the trajectory of this family must change. Must change. As far as that is how it is, so you and who? So the creditor came and took the kids. I'm sure the woman thought that because the husband is dead, they will leave it alone. Hey, listen. <laughs> Your debt is not cancelled because you are bereaved. It only adds to your pain and your sorrow. Hmm? <laughs> let me let me give you something. I'll, I'll leave you in a little bit. Okay, I promise. I'm. I'm just. I just realized that I'm running out of time. Let me just jump some things here. Let me. Let me. <laughs> let me say it. Let me say it. Okay. <laughs> You know, you know, there are two ways that death is announced. Right? And you hear the announcement, they say, with deep sorrow, we announce the sudden passing or the sudden demise of our father. It is always sudden. And with deep sorrow. Even when the guy dies at 90, yeah, you ask them, say, hmm, that just died, though. And it was so sudden. You say, how, how old is he? See, the man left us suddenly. We didn't know how old is he? 90. 90 and a sudden. When, when were you expecting him to die? No, that is not sudden. No. Hello, somebody. But you see, the reason they are saying sudden is because they were not prepared. The people left behind are not prepared for burial. There is no money. And the man left nothing. So it was sudden and with deep sorrow. You go to a funeral like that, people are crying. They are not crying for the dead, though. They are crying for... <laughs> I had a story of a woman. She went to, uh, you know, a trader. She went to some other town and uh, came by a couple of days. She came and there was a crowd in her house. And Boa said, uh, we are sorry. We are sorry. I said, sorry for what? He entered the house and the husband was lying there, dead. You know this, uh, this thing you cover your head with? What is it called? The Nigerians use it quite a bit. Why the Nigerians? A gale or something. The woman had one. She just took it off, tied it around her waist. Look at that man. <laughs> Wake up! Wake up! Who are you leaving me with these six children with? They, uh, all these things. Wake up! The man woke up. Home. <laughs> he, he came back to life. <laughs> hey! <laughs> he, he came back to life. Oga. What nonsense is that? Leave me six children and with all. The, and you know that the, the, the sad thing with poor people is the way they can give birth. As if they are trying to win an award. Because we still have this agrarian mindset that I need more children to work on my farm. So everywhere they turn, children, children. Have you read us rich people? Two, three. And they have money to fund, and you, you don't have, and you still produce. Say, God said we should produce and fill the earth. The man that that promise was made to give birth to one, you six, what's wrong with you? <laughs> There's another announcement. Also about death. They say, with gratitude to God. For a life well lived. We announce the passing into glory of Mr. So so and so. They don't die, they pass to glory. With gratitude to God, we announce to you. That is the funeral where you go and the, the widow, she doesn't, they don't cry. I mean, no, oh, Pastor, the woman has some Gucci shades on, Louis Vuitton shoes. 
Eh? Faragomo uh, 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 bag. Christian Louboutini something. Dress. That's what I'm telling you. That's man. They don't cry. Hey, they go like. They sob. They don't cry. They sob. My brother, I'm telling you, people are crying. Poverty will make you cry, I tell you. Pastor, they don't cry. They sob. Mommy, how are things going? It is well. It is well. Because she's seen the account, the different currencies, and how, how things are going to change. And they are thanking God. Say, ah, finally, we can share this man's money. You, when poor people die, you go to their home one week after. Everybody is still there crying. When a rich man dies, you go to the house. Where is mommy? Oh, mommy went to Bahamas. She said, because of that, she's going to take some time off. Starting to chop the money. That is, listen, die well. Die well. If you are going to die, don't die like the prophet. Oh. That when you are dead, they are bringing credit cards, the car notes, house this, everything. Now your, your, your wife and children are, are just stressed. You didn't even make provisions for your own burial. We have to find money to burn. If I will slap you, bring you back to life. You die like that in this church. If nothing at all, save the money to bury you so we can go on with our lives. Get the insurance so we can bury you in peace. You need really help us now. You are dying to, you are going to suffer for it. I dare you to say amen. amen. Point number See, the, we, we're talking about we're talking about power versus wisdom. You see, the, the truth is that let me let me be honest with you. The truth is that the church has confused these two, and so we have the power ministry and the wisdom ministry. The wisdom ministry also the word of God the, without power, and so you go to minister in such a church like that, you see all kinds of demons operating in the church because it's all about wisdom. And then there's the power ministry. It's all about power. It's about power, prayer. Do you know some of the most poorest people I have seen are prayer warriors? If it took prayer, just prayer to make rich, prayer warriors would be the most richest people. And yet they are most poor. Because somebody has lied to them that all, and they'll say prayer is the master key. No, prayer is just one of the keys, it's not the master key. Say, so what are you? Listen, there are key things that prayer cannot break through. It takes praise and worship. There are things that prayer cannot break through. It takes wisdom. So listen, the wisdom filled and the power filled, they are both not wrong. They are just incomplete. We need a common ground between the two. Power and wisdom. Because let me tell you something. You are barren, you come to this church. These lights, beautiful as they are, they can't make you have children. No, it takes power. It takes a level of anointing to say, go, and a year by now, you will have a child. And you go, and a year by now, you have a child. That is not wisdom, it's power. So we need both. The church must teach both. You see, Elijah was, let me see what time. Elijah was power. First uh, Kings chapter 18 stands from Mount Carmel and say, Let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. If Elijah was the one they went to, come here, let me show you. Jesus said to the woman, What did you say? That your husband is dead and the crisis are coming? In the name of Jesus, it won't happen. Kneel down. You to kneel. I invoke the covenant agreement that your husband had with God and in the name of Jehovah whom I serve, whose I am I should walk out of here today, the debt will be cancelled in Jesus name she will walk away and I promise you, the debt will be cancelled 
But guess what? That is temporary relief. Because where does she go from here? No money. She will be in debt again in only two months because she has to live. But Elisha is power and wisdom. Do you know what I realized in this thing? Elisha didn't pray. Was there fasting? No. Night vigil? No. Extended prayer meeting? No. No, he didn't do all of that. He said, woman, we are going to get you out of this. The first thing is, how many relationships have you built? How many people do you know? How many neighbors do you have that are in good relationship with you? Go and borrow. Here you are, you are a Christian. Every day, you won't greet anybody. You won't say hi to anybody because you think you are the best thing that happened after KFC. Listen, you need people. Humble yourself and save yourself the liability. You won't talk to anybody. You don't respect anybody. You disregard everybody. Nobody talks to you. Nobody knows you. What is it you are doing in your house? You don't want anybody to know where you live. And people die in their homes two, three days. Nobody knows they are dead. And we are in the same church and it's terrible. Pastor Lute, it's sad that you will die and nobody knows after days. May God exempt us from such nonsense. You must have somebody that checks on you once a day or once every other day. Somebody that you are in close connection and relationship with. Listen, listen to me. Your riches are useless without people. My God. That is why some people don't like this church. But listen, I will tell you the truth. I will die telling the truth. I'm not here to impress anybody. I passed that stage long time ago. And we lie to people and all kinds of... No way. If you are going to live long, live well too. Don't just live accumulating of years. Life is not about how long you live. It is how well you live. Listen, religion can hurt you more than the enemy. I'm telling you. Okay. Let me hear me. You know, you know, Pastor, the only remedy to ignorance is knowledge, knowledge not prayer. It's knowledge. See, we can't. And I'm sorry, please, don't go about thinking, oh, pastor, speak, he's disrespectful. And I'm not disrespecting you. I just want to irritate you so you change your life. Yeah, listen, you, you can anoint a fool all you want. It will not take the foolishness out of, of their heart. They will become an anointed fool. Still foolish, but anointed. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're talking about love, but within he said, love is this, love is this. He said, when I was a child, I behaved like a child. But when I grew up, he didn't say childish things left him because of anointing. He said, I, I put childish things away. You, you have to make conscious effort to put certain things away. It doesn't go by itself. Somebody say wisdom. Say power. And say, I need both. Amen. So next week, we are fasting. You are hearing wisdom. Let's add power. All right, all right, all right. I got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Amen. You, you see, in the, in the New Testament, Jesus Christ talks about... Uh, the Jews are looking for a sign, right? And, 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 and the Greeks are looking for, for wisdom, for knowledge. You see, but Jesus Christ said, I'm not for either of you. I am for both. I'm for science, and I'm also for wisdom. 
do, do you understand what I'm saying? He says, I, I, I show you grace, but I also tell you the truth. You understand what I'm saying? Remember, we're talking about, uh, for those of you who are here with us, Easter, we're talking about the woman that was caught in adultery, right? When, when all the accusers were gone, Jesus asked her, where are your accusers? She said, they are all gone. He said, okay, now let me talk to you. He said, I'm showing you grace, but I'm not condoning your act. You were wrong. But I will not give you up to your enemies. So now that they are gone, let's talk. You go and better make sure you don't do it again. Hello. That is grace and truth at work. So I've shown you grace, but I'm not going to lie to you. Power and wisdom. The church needs both, though. The church needs both. We do, we do. I'm telling you, we need both. So let me, let me, let me try and put this all together. Uh, okay. Number two. Number, I'll, I'll end here. I'll end on number two. I'll end on number two. Develop an investment mentality. We're talking about money matters, remember? Money matters. Develop an investment what? Hello. Are you, are you still okay? Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. I just want to see which, which, which things I can just skip and still get enough for you. So can I have five minutes of your time and just wrap it up? Hello, is that okay? Just five minutes, I promise. I promise. Sis, uh, Mimi, are you here? Five minutes. Okay. What did Elijah teach the woman? What did Elijah teach the woman? Elijah, sorry. She was teaching, he was teaching her to develop an investment mentality. All right. We understand church, but we lack the investment mentality. I want to give you practical things. Okay. Now, let me, let, me, let me define investment mentality. What do I mean by that? When we say investment mentality, what do I mean? Investment mentality is a mindset that is concerned about the multiplication of all that you have. Investment mentality is a mindset that is concerned about the multiplication of all that you have. So when you get $10,000, your first instinct is not a Gucci bag. Your first instinct is how do I multiply it? That's a investment mentality. Are you are you understanding me? Okay. So so remember the Jesus Christ told the parable of the men with talents. They came and they doubled it. The one man who had this one, he said, he said, Jesus said the worst you could have done was to put it in a bank for me to get interest. This is the least you can do. All right. So we must have an investment word mentality all right give me proverbs 21 verse 5 let me let me wrap it up i i, I promise you proverbs 21 verse 5 it says that the plans of the diligence so that diligence must have what plans you must have plan to prosper you have not plan to make well he said the plans of the diligence lead surely to what plenty the plans of a diligent man leads to what plenty so then the lack of plans, financial plans will lead to what? Lack, poverty. You will be poor for lack of financial plan. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is Bible. We are talking Bible now. You know, the pastor, you hear people say, ah, this week some careless money came into me. Oh, careless money. No, there are no careless money. Oh, only careless people. No money is careless. So investment mentality is how do I multiply this money that I have? So you don't wake up one day and say, I am making money, but I don't know what is going on with my money. You are spending it. What is investment mentality? It is a mindset that is concerned about the acquisition of assets, not liabilities. Acquisition of what? 
assets, no liabilities. You can acquire assets with money, but you can also acquire liabilities with money. Listen, your car is not an asset. It's a liability. You drive it out of the parking lot and take it back and say you want to sell it and see how fast it has depreciated in one day. An asset is something that appreciates with time. Anything in your life that depreciates over time is a liability. When I was doing accounting in Africa, they told us anything your money buys and you have a, a tangible is an asset. So foolishly we believe that the suit is an asset. The shoe is an asset. The car is an asset. The wall clock is an asset. An asset is something that when you put that money in, it can return back to you with more money. It's an asset, my own definition. So the thing you are buying, ask yourself, is it going to bring me back money if it is not liability? Do you still love me? So an asset is anything that appreciates in value. It's an asset. Are you okay? A liability is anything that depreciates in value after you get it. Anything that takes money from your pocket and doesn't bring money back, liability. Can I, can I, can I say something in one minute and leave you? So pastor, how come you spend $1,200 on an iPhone and you don't have any stocks in Apple? Hmm? Buy, buy, buy 0.000002% of the shares in Apple for $200, right? So that at least when Apple is making money from your thousand two, they will give you little to also chop. Eh? How come you, you, you drive all these cars and every four years you want to change car because you think you have to live like the Joneses and you have to change and you don't have any investment in any of these electric cars that are coming because whether we like it or not, it's electric cars so buy some shares. Even if it's 1,000, throw it there and forget it. Sometimes you look at the thing and you have a heart attack. Stop looking. Because this is the thing. Listen, it can drop and drop and drop. But if you bought 20 shares, you have 20 shares. That will never change. The price may drop, but you have 20 shares. If it goes up, you are going up. Your grocery store, every day they are taking your money. Why don't you buy a little bit? Investment. Some of us, all our stock is in the closet. <laughs> and the thing is breaking and you are fixing it. Can we continue next two weeks? Is this good? Because I want to teach some practical things that you can walk away with here. Because when you make money, anytime money comes to you, can I, you know, Pastor Mark was here helping us to get out of debt. That's the first place. You get out of debt. It doesn't make sense for you to be in debt and you are saving money. Because the money that you are saving, the interest the bank is giving you, it is not anywhere close to the interest they are taking on your credit card. Pay it off. And then start saving. And then from that saving, you go to investment. Right? Anytime you get money, eh, me salute. Your paycheck, let me even start with your paycheck and then I'll end with this. Your paycheck, only 70% is yours. 70%. If you cannot live off the 70%, you are living over and above your means. If the 70% means you have to stay in that one room for three more years, stay in that room for three more years, you are not in competition with anybody. As a man, you know the most dumbest thing I, I ever have heard. If somebody saves for seven years and he takes all the seven years savings to do a wedding. You are, you are the highest level of fool. Eh? 
And say, Pastor, it is one time, you know, I am trying to make memories. Ask those people who had wonderful wedding. When was the last time they checked their pictures? Talking about making memories. It's seven years of savings for one day. Listen, wedding is just an incident. It is just an occasion. Two years, we will send you away. Two hours, sorry. Two hours, we are done. Major two hours. And you take seven years of savings for two hours. And you think it's wisdom. So he doesn't have a cow, but you use 700, 1,000 to rent a limo. And then Monday, he will join the bus. You are a special kind of fool. It is true, man. Uh, you think I brought you here to lie to you? I brought you here to tell you the truth. Please come back next week. Because a lot of our problems are not demon problems. They are wisdom problems. So pastor, if the 70% means that you have to live with a friend and get better, just change your attitude and live with a friend. So the 30%, what do you do? 10% is tithe. You are telling God that you are my source. I acknowledge that. He said, remember God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Remember God. Remember God first. And then the 20% is savings. Then the 70%, let's parte. Let's chop. Sometimes some people, you have to chop small. My name is King Slay, so I approve this message. Amen. Oh, we'll make it. We'll make it. Well, we are raising millionaires in this church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Maybe to those who said amen. amen. We are raising millionaires. We are raising business people. We are raising people that when we get to a point, we say we need 10,000, 100,000 to run the program. We don't have to raise funds. Say, so, Pastor, leave the people alone. Here's a check. Take it. It will happen. I believe it will happen. And when God brings you there, remember us. Will mean are you okay? I pray over your life today. May you never die before your time. May you die in your full age. But may you also never die and leave anyone with a debt. May God remember your sacrifice. In Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, I pray that today's broadcast will enable and empower you to live a life of impact. God has a life of impact for you. Keep on making impact. I'm out of time. I've got to leave you. But I'll see you next time. Until then, continue impacting your generation. Thank you again for your support. Take care, my friends. You are here to positively impact your generation. Shalom.